Hi, John McElroy here, talking all things automotive. Say, can Tesla really take over the auto industry? And if it can, what's it going to take for that to happen? Last week, Adam Jonas, the famous Wall Street analyst from Morgan Stanley, said that at its current rate of growth, Tesla will pass General Motors and Ford in U.S. market share by 2030. So I wanted to get a second opinion. I asked auto analyst Jeff Schuster from the data firm IHS Market if that was in their forecast. Uh, we're not quite that robust, um, although it's interesting because we just uh, just this morning had a global analyst call. It sounds really exciting, right? Where we got our team together around the world and, and the topic was Tesla. Uh, and that is, you know, as we look at Tesla adding capacity in markets, not only the U.S. market, obviously a Europe and in additional capacity in Asia, um, we do think that we're going to see much higher volume than, than we're currently expecting. Um, but that being said, you know, Tesla owns the market right now. There's a lot of competition coming, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Um, they still have an advantage. Clearly, they're, they're ahead of the rest of uh, the automakers, I think, in terms of development uh, in technology of at least a cycle, if not two cycles of vehicles. Wow. So they're going to carry that advantage. Uh, but I think our expectation is that advantage starts to diminish over time. Uh, and, and we believe, you know, the the traditional automakers, not so traditional anymore as they as they convert as well, but um, it will we'll start to gain some of that traction. Uh, so I think it's going to be a, a very competitive market. We're not quite as robust on Tesla, although we are uh, more upbeat this, you know, after this morning's meeting than we were yesterday. Wow, that's quite a statement that Tesla is one or two design cycles ahead of everyone else. That means Tesla is at least 10 years ahead of all the traditional car companies. And notice what Jeff Schuster also said, that he was more bullish on Tesla after the company's global analyst call than he was the day before. So why? What changed his mind? Well, you know, I think it's really a factor of just getting the, getting the, the global team together and looking at the, at the various issues and, and understanding, okay, they're, they're having success in this space. Um, the, you know, Model Y is starting to really get some traction as well. It's not cannibalizing Model 3 as much as we might have thought it would either. So I think some of those driving factors, um, you know, you know are, are certainly behind a lot of the, the decision here. I also think, you know, maybe we were a little too, um, too robust on, on the conversion of ICD to EV for some of the traditional automakers as well. Um, their lineups are expanding immensely it's still going to take some time to really get to get going in that space. So it, it'll really allows for that. I, I think, um, you know, when we look at it, um, it's still, we still see Tesla losing a, a fair portion of their, their market share dominance now, uh, but, but not to the level that we were at before. Okay. If he's not convinced that Tesla will surpass GM and Ford in the U S market share, let's talk about the luxury segment because that's really Tesla's playground. How does Jeff think that Tesla will do in the luxury segment? They're going to be a substantial player, if not a leader in the luxury segment. Um, I, I think that's, that is, is certainly a path that, that we see going forward. You know, for Tesla, it really depends. You know, there's obviously a lot of white space in their lineup right now. It depends on really where they move into and, and how they address the market, not only in the U.S., but the, the, the markets uh, the other markets, the Chinese market, the European market, make sure they have the right vehicles in the right segments. Uh, and, and I think so far that, you know, they're on that path. I think the, some of the news coming out of, out of Tesla and in Elon Musk uh, about the, you know, their concentration, the, the pushing back some of the launches again, you know, th these are normal things that happen, but I think that does show um, they can't do everything at once clearly. So I think this is going to be staged over time. And, and if they if this is a coordinated, well-executed effort, they're going to continue to be a dominant player, I think, in the EV space. Um, they're going to face just a lot more competition. So I wouldn't put them in, you know, if, if we're looking out five, 10 years, I don't think we're going to see Tesla as a top five uh, global automaker. Uh, but I think they're going to be a very substantial automaker. Okay, so even Jeff agrees that Tesla is going to be a substantial global automaker. But I had to ask him, 
where does he think Tesla's global market share will be in 2030? Right now, it's about 68% globally. So I asked if he had a prediction. I don't know if I'd want to stick my neck out on the number, but I, <laughs> I, I think they're going to be less than 25% market share. Um, so probably less than 20. I think that's where we're modeling right now. Um, but it's, you know, there's, there's a lot between now and say 2030, and that's really the target point that we we're looking at. Okay, let's go back to Adam Jonas's prediction that Tesla would surpass GM and Ford in U.S. market share. What's it going to take for that to happen? Well, in normal times, before COVID and the chip shortage jumbled everything up, General Motors sold about 2.8 million vehicles in the U.S., giving it 17% of the market. Ford sold about 2.3 million vehicles, giving it 13.8% market share. Right now, Tesla has about 3% of the U.S. market, according to the latest estimates from Ward's Intelligence. Clearly, that's going to grow this year as Gigafactory Texas comes online. When you combine that with the output Tesla gets from its manufacturing complex in Fremont, California, that will give it roughly 1.2 million units of capacity in the U.S. But remember, GM has 2.8 million units of capacity. Ford has 2.3 million. So Tesla needs a million more units of capacity to surpass Ford and one and a half million more to pass GM. And while it can try to squeeze more capacity out of Fremont and Austin, this tells me Tesla needs another assembly plant in the U.S. So where would it put it? It certainly has the land available to expand Giga Texas, but at some point you hit the point of diminishing returns. You get to be too big. You suck up all the available labor in the area. Your employee parking lots become so humongous, it takes forever just to walk from your car into the plant. You've got so many trucks coming in and out to deliver parts and components that the traffic turns into a logistical nightmare. So maybe what Tesla really needs is a different place to build a new plant. And I would suggest to Mr. Elon Musk that if he really wants to change the U.S. auto industry, he should put that next gigafactory in Detroit. Hey, in case you haven't seen my reports before, I'm John McElroy. I'm the president of Blue Sky Productions, the media company that produces AutoLine. I'm an award-winning journalist who's been covering the global automotive industry for over 40 years. I get to interview the top executives and experts in the industry and this is my way of sharing my insights with you. Thanks for watching, and I welcome your comments below.